Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and today's video is inspired by Jessica Flynn from Flynn Sisters Boutique. I am part of one of her swaps in her membership group and I'm recreating her Wild About Fall Tumblr tutorial. So I'm going to show you the behind the scenes on how I put this together and how I put my own twist on her original design. So of course everything will be listed in the description box but let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I want to show you the cup we're working with today. This is a 24 ounce handled mug tumbler from the Seal Magnolia. This is a brand new design that they've just recently come out with and I'm really excited because it's a larger travel mug style that I think that everyone is going to love. So if you haven't yet checked this out, definitely make sure to head over to the Seal Magnolia company and check out their new tumbler and stainless steel designs. So I have already spray painted my tumbler with a few spray paint colors which I will put a picture of right here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to glitter the cup. So I have put a thin layer of epoxy we're going to do epoxy method application here for my glitter. And you guys know that I'm going to be using some of my favorite colors to be able to put this design together. So I am starting with Athena, my all time favorite color gold from peachy olive glitters here. This is a very chunky gold mix here, but it's got a lot of holographic, like reflective shift. And it's what I love when it comes to a beautiful gold color. So after that, we're going to move on to some of our chunkier colors. We're going to start here with my chunkiest purple, which is Dazed. This is from Peachy Olive Glitter as well. Dazed has a really beautiful, like translucent look to it. And that was kind of what I wanted because I'm adding a little bit of depth in dimension with a couple of the other colors. And so I wanted the base of the purple that I have here in this kind of stripe format that I have going on with these ombres to really just be able to hold all of those colors on top of them with and in addition to giving its own sort of reflective, beautiful look, if you will. So once I'm done with that, you guys know I'm going to go in with my final dark color or my finer chunky color, I should say, to then get into the blue sections here. And so we're going to go in with Thick Tiff. This is from my Asia Creations. It's a beautiful like teal blue and I just it's my go to that and Tiffany who which is the other blue I'm using here that is the finer sister cut of this glitter these are just beautiful blue colors that I just I always gravitate towards these when I need sort of that light blue teal color now that we've done all of our chunky glitters, it's now time to go into our finer cuts. And so you guys know the way that I like to do my layering when it comes to using multiple colors is I like to start with my chunkiest to just give myself kind of like the blueprint, if you will, of where I want all my glitter to kind of be, and then go in with my finer colors on a top to really fill in all of the areas. So the color I just went in there was Athena, um, Athena's sister cut, which is goddess, excuse me, that is also from Peachy Olive Glitters, and that is the fine cut of Athena, definitely one of my other go-tos, and, and now I'm putting in kind of a new color, so because I have a lot of reflective color shift in my glitter choices, I wanted to keep true with that, and so I'm going in here in the purple section with Moon Dust, so Moon Dust, Dust is this beautiful, like, pink, purple, and blue mix of gorgeousness that I just have to have on this tumbler. I really thought that this would just kind of lighten up and bring this purple section to life. And I really do feel like it did that. You're going to see me add a couple of other colors later when we get into leopard print. That's also going to kind of mimic that holographic reflective base that we have going on in both the gold, purple, and then the black sections when we do the leopard print. So I'm going to go back in with my goddess here once again and with that I'm literally just trying to start to begin a little bit of a blend here. So this middle gold section I knew was going to be a little bit tough and the reason why it's going to be tough is because we're working with a handled mug. So we want to make sure that we keep that ombre look but we also have to make sure that I am getting a bit of a blend in between all three of my colors and typically that is most difficult when you are putting the colors together over sort of the um, curve of a cup or when you're working with handles. So after I finished with Athena, I'm going to go in with 2009 from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is a beautiful like magenta color, but a very, very fine color, which I love. And it really just sort of brightened up this purple area too. It gave a lot of that pink from the moon dust, some real sort of just stand out pop. 
on top of that uh, dazed because that has sort of that pink shift very similar to 2009 already mixed in so I'm getting that purple hue from the dazed which is my base layer and then I'm getting a lot of the pink pinkish purple reflectiveness by adding this 2009 on top so when you're glittering to also be sure to pay attention to your handle if you're working on a handled cup I always try and keep only the finer glitters on top of my handle just like I would with the bottom of my cup because I don't have to and don't want to I should say fight with any chunky glitter when it comes to epoxying on those weird sections so I like to keep the finer glitters on top of those sections the handle and the bottom that way I don't have to spend a whole lot of time sanding because you guys know how much I enjoy that right so the final color we're going in with here this is Tiffany who so this is the sister or finer cut of thick tiff it is just a beautiful beautiful teal color as I mentioned and it's really just going to pull all of these blends together and that is kind of it I'll just go in and finish up with my Athena once again because you could just can never have too much gold if you will just to kind of give it a once over all the way through and cover up any exposed epoxy whatsoever to make sure I have a completely covered and glittered cup before I set this aside to cure. So I'll let this cure for two hours which is the recommended time for my epoxy since I'm using such a thin layer of liquidy split and then I will take this outside to spray with two times clear spray paint and then get it on the turner for a couple coats of epoxy. So although I am recreating Jessica Flynn's original design, of course I had to put my own twist on it, which is why I incorporated these sort of teal colored blue. I'm not also using the exact same colors that she used for her original design. She used a more bronzier color and I'm actually going to add vintage, which is one of the colors she used into my layer of epoxy after my leopard print spots but I wanted to stay true to the original design but also put my own spin on it so choosing different colors that I really just love together and I just absolutely love the blue and purple look that this gives and it's just it just screams fall to me when I think fall and I think Jessica Flynn I think of her gypsy leopard swirl and these are kind of the color vibes that she puts together for that original design of hers and so I was kind of going with that as I was putting together her wild about fall tutorial or cup I should say that was inspired by that tutorial so after my couple coats of epoxy I am going to do a little bit of sanding I had a little bit of a rough edge and I really wanted to make sure to pay some extra attention and give some extra love to my handle so one of the big tips that I'll definitely tell you about working with anything um, that has a handle is you want to do thin coats around your handles but you also want to make sure you have a thick enough coat to cover if that makes sense. Typically the epoxy will pool right at the adhesion to where the handle sort of is welded to the cup so to speak so you really want to pay attention to not let the epoxy pool there that's where you want your epoxy to be the thinnest but obviously you want to make sure that you're getting really good coverage around the handle because you wouldn't want your handle to be rough and rugged while the rest of the tumbler is smooth so it's definitely a little bit of a fine line and definitely the handle when you're epoxying needs just a little bit of extra love when it comes to epoxying that area so after I've done all of my necessary sanding I'm just going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a wash down with just a little bit of 91% rubbing alcohol to get any of that debris off and then we're going to move into applying the leopard print so you guys know that typically I will apply leopard print hand painted right over the raw glitter for some reason my brain just was not working this day and I ended up putting it under epoxy and realizing afterwards that I hadn't put put the leopard print on it so I typically, yes, will do it over raw glitter, but you can also add your leopard print after you've done a coat of epoxy. It's completely up to you. I know some people would prefer to wait after a coat of epoxy because if they mess up and don't really care for their hand-painted leopard print, they could always just wipe it off, if you will, and start over. So to complete my leopard print, we're going to add the leopard print with some Mod Podge, and I'm mixing two colors together here. I'm mixing a bit of Dark Side from 4K Glitter, which is from Vinyl Gallery, and Back Batman, which is a super fine true black from peachy olive glitters to give me a holographic shift to my black I was gonna go all dark side but I also wanted to silver main super dark for the leopard print spot so I decided to add a little bit of the Batman as well just to keep its kind of depth if you will but to also bring out those other reflective colors in both Athena and Moondust with adding that reflective holographic dark side so now we're gonna go ahead and hand paint these leopard spots. I've talked to you guys quite a bit in a couple of my tutorials about 
making and creating your own hand-painted leopard, my best advice, as I always say, is to just have a reference, something that is leopard print looking. Um, so I have a mat under me, which would be a great sort of reference to figure out the colors and the styles and designs, I should say, in which to create your shapes of leopard print. Um, but really, you just have to go with it. Leopard print is just one of those things that you have to try and you have to go with it. You can always go back and add more spots or in this case, because I'm doing it over epoxy, you could always go back and wipe it off and start again. So I just love the look of hand painted leopard and leopard will forever be my favorite color. So <laughs> when in doubt, add leopard print. So after all my spots are on, I have tapped off all the excess. I'll wait until this is completely dry before I brush off any of the excess black glitter and seal it one more time before putting it under one more coat of epoxy. So it's under this coat of epoxy here that I ended up adding a little bit of vintage. Vintage is a color glitter from Peachy Olive Glitters. It has a beautiful bronzy tone color. It's darker than Goddess and Athena, but it really gives literally that vintage look, probably why it's called vintage. So after I added just a little bit of a sprinkle, to the cup of vintage with just just above and below the leopard print section just a little bit of a light drizzle if you will of the vintage color there i took it off the turner after it was cured and we're going to sand once again to make sure that i have a nice smooth rim i had a couple of rough spots and i want to again pay a bit of attention to my handled area because i want to make sure i don't get any pooling around the handle as well as make sure that my handle is smooth so we're just going to do a once over with a 60 grit sanding block. You could follow up with a finer grit, but I didn't really have a whole lot I needed to work on. I worked on just kind of those tough and rough spots, but that first initial sanding was super helpful to make sure I didn't have a whole lot of sanding to do at this step and spot. After we're done with this, I am going to add the decal that I created. So of course I'm going to clean up my cup, but I did go ahead and put together this decal that I created. It's an SVG that's available in my Etsy shop. I created that right in Procreate and it's available for purchase for anybody that's interested. And Jessica Flynn's original design, she had a wild about fall decal, which I loved, but because I don't know if the person that's going to be using this is a huge fall lover, hopefully they're a leopard print lover. So I decided to do a wild about leopard lover, a wild about leopard decal instead. And so I just took my SVG file and put it in Cricut Design Space and then added an offset at 0.5. And we're going to layer this on this vinyl. So I cut these images. The offset was cut on the gold textured metallic, which is my all-time fave. And then I just did a black vinyl for the top layer, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and layer these two vinyls, one on top of the other, and then we can get it applied to the tumbler. So once I've gotten this placed, of course, we're going to go ahead and do the hinge method here. Um, so I'm just going to adhere one side of my transfer tape to one side of the cup, and then I'll peel back and peel the vinyl backing off and then adhere that one side before I then swap, smooth that section, swap to the other side, peel off the rest of the backing there, remove that, and then you're going to pull very tautly and then smooth out that section. I like to use my squeegee here to kind of help me make sure I don't get any trapped air underneath the decal, which could create some sort of weird look, if you will, through the vinyl in my final coats of epoxy. So my decal looks pretty good, and that is kind of it. I'm gonna show you now how I epoxy my cups when I'm working with the handle to give you some extra tips. So my cup is back on the turner and we're working on the final coat of epoxy here. So I've whipped up some liquidy split KS resin and I start with kind of the bulk of the cup first. That is kind of my go-to. I know some people like to start with just the handle, but I like to start with the larger part of the cup first, kind of get a nice layer down before I start to pay attention to the handle. So I try not to put any epoxy directly on the handle and just use any excess that's on the cup to coat my handle. And this is going to help keep my epoxy thin on the handle and you'll also see that I go around quite a bit kind of those edges and where that 
that handle is attached to the cup to make sure that I don't have any pooling there because as the cup spins it just tends to get trapped right there so I want to keep that area as thin as possible and to make sure I don't get any air trapped in there then you'll torch this and then that is it so here's the final look at the final result of this look I absolutely love the original design you know that I will have that listed down in the description box definitely go over to Jessica Flynn's channel and show her some love as well as watch her original tutorial but I hope that you did enjoy today's video and if you did give this video a huge thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one bye